Believe it or not, you can get electrocuted in pools if you don't earth them. So the way the pool interacts with the earth means they have separate charges. We work with the Sparky to earth these pools and that will make sure the charge is neutralised throughout the pool. If you don't earth the pool, you can actually get an electric shock when you're swimming in the pool. Most pools say it's like a six by three, you only need one earth spot. For a larger pool, you're going to need multiple. And then we go around with the Sparky and actually test what they call continuity and to make sure not, none of the charges are above the, the levels. Anything within 1200 of a pool has to be earthed, any metals. If we earth the pool and then you've got a metal fence right next to it, we can actually tap into that pool earth and then earth the fence as well. Always has to be earthed by, by law. We're in Harvey Bay and it's quite rural, so getting concrete here is only one concrete plant and we can only get six metre loads. It's going to take a lot longer for this job. The sand is apparently a lot heavier down here than we can get in Brisbane, sunny coast. So they can only do six metre loads, which means, you know, over the course of 10, 20 trucks, you're going to have an extra five trucks. It's a massive pool, 25 by 15 metres. Been here for probably the last three, four weeks, bending steel, making sure it's perfect. This is going to be a retirement home pool. We're here on behalf of Hutchies. It's really good to align with another tier one builder and align our processes and, and guidelines for this type of scale of pool. This is going to be a slow beach entry. You'll be able to walk from the surround slab into the pool and slowly descend. This is for elderly people. It's going to be easier for them to enter the pool, if not that ramp on that side, this beach entry here. And the other side is what we call a California lounge, which is basically just a, a nice waiting area for people to chill out and then step into the pool. Pool's 1.2 metres deep throughout, all the same level. This is good for you know retirement or a commercial pool in general. They're not here to tread water, they're here to relax. They can still swim laps in this depth. I think it's a well-designed pool and we were involved personally with the design of this pool the whole way through. I think September last year I started working on the design with Hutchies for this and now you know it's October year after so it's 13 months to get to this point. The end result means we have it all covered, you know, and it comes together. It's not a simple task for a pool this scale. Challenging part, probably being in Harvey Bay. I've got a truck sitting here today because we're in Harvey Bay. Say if one truck breaks down, like what would I do? I'll be, I'll be screwed. We'll have to stop the pool. So they're the things you've got to consider when you're going rural like we are in Harvey Bay. There's minimal trades around here, so I've had to bring all my trades up with me and all my boys on the books. So, But it's beautiful out here and I'm happy to do more work out here. And as we expand and grow throughout Australia, we're just going to get more connections in every place we go and the next time will be easier, you know? So we're starting with the spa, all the boys are in there now, shaping it and spraying it. It's always good to get the spa done first because it's technically a separate entity to the pool. Then move on to the rest of the pool and start spraying. So once that's done, we'll be ripping into this. Do all the sides and the floor will come last. Normally the logistical challenge with spas is they're really small. So you actually got so many boys in there trying to shape it and it's really hard to get it done. This being such a big pool, the spa is almost the size of a, a pool itself. We can just sit here right here and pump next to it. So when you have a rooftop pool, you've got to use a boom pump or a kibble. You can rarely use a line pump unless it's like level, you know, level one. The only thing to worry about with these in-ground pools, if you get a lot of rain, these fill up, it all collapse in steel. So there's a fine line and balance between getting these pools done in time and also getting it done correctly. Because if you do it too fast, obviously you know what happens. At the same time, if you do it too slow and you get a rain event, and then it's all going to collapse and you have to redo the whole thing before the spray. So. It's a balance, you always got to check the weather and always got to be on top of it. So this is all going to be pebble, 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 and then we'll have a waterline tile around the whole thing. And then that entry here will be tiled entry. And then we'll do a little bit of tile at the top entry there into a pebble. So it's probably a good in between, you know, you still got the nice tile on this entry. Full tiling, something like this is cost a fortune and, and a massive labor. And you've got to, you know, double waterproof the whole pool. So it's a good in between having tile and pebble here. All right, so Sammy's actually got the laser out right now. And with these pools, it's crucial to have the perfect height. So we've got 1.2 meter depth here. So Sammy's got the laser out. And what he'll do is he'll set it up to height and then the bottom of the laser will be the perfect pool depth and we'll ping that through the whole pool to make sure we're perfect on height. Same goes the beach entry and this. That's how we get the appropriate heights, not just spraying and, and guessing. This will be height correct to the millimetre. Thanks, bro. Okay. That's a good hook. <laughs> this is a main drain. It's all taped up now, so obviously no concrete gets inside. But this will stick into the gravel, we'll cut this off to fit perfectly. But when we dig the pool, we actually dig a hole in the middle, which we call the main drain. Then we'll shove this into it and on top, and that'll finish uh, with concrete level. The purpose of these is actually to stop pools becoming boats. You might not believe it, but pools, if, if you didn't have this, and what we have a hydro valve, which is a spring, that if water pressure builds up beneath the pool and you've emptied the pool, it'll actually allow the water to come through. If you didn't have that and you just had concrete, the pool can just turn into a boat. 
and the whole thing will come out of ground with the groundwater. These are probably the most critical parts of every pool, which you never really see. You'll see little white things in the bottom of the pools, but we have inserts now where we can actually tile them or pebble them, so you don't see them as much, whereas the old school ones are these big, white, ugly things. These are super important, and every pool should have one at the deepest point because that's the first point of where the water is going to reach, you know, groundwater. That's something when I first started pool building I couldn't believe, like what pools can pop out of the ground. I talk about disability requirements a lot. They've got the ramp into the pool. So this isn't just a ramp that you can just throw in and, and you know, say, sweet, we've got a ramp. It's actually got to have specific falls to be compliant. So we'll be running through that today. It'll be a landing, then a fall to a landing, then a fall. And then at the end there, you've got to actually have enough clearance for a wheelchair to be able to turn around and get into the pool. So this is uh, Disability Compliance 101. You need it every commercial pool now. A cool feature, and we'll have a stainless steel handrail that we've allowed for up there to, to earth. Number one rule with pool lighting is always face the lights away from the building. Say they're standing here looking into the pool now, you'll notice there's no pool lights at all on the other side of the pool. If you're standing there looking in, you see these pool lights looking at you, it ruins it. So the pool lights we put on this side so they shine outwards and, and they illuminate the pool that way. Because it's such a large pool, there's, there's a whole layer above that you have to go to for filtration. So instead of the 50 mil pipe, we're now running a 100 mil pipe around the whole width of the pool and then turning that into an 80 mil and then a 50 mil and then returning to the pool. That way you can get the flow rates to ensure you're actually uh, cleaning the pool to standards and keeping up with the flow rates and, and turnover of the amount of people in the pool. A pool like this is going to have upgraded equipment, upgraded heaters, so the pipe work has to match it. You know, people just think, all right, well, pool's three times the size, let's do three times the skimmers and three times the pumps and three times the, you know, glass media filters, but it doesn't work that way. You've got to have a full upgraded system and the glass media filters. There's a whole design process that goes into that. It's not an afterthought. When you get to this level, you know, 25 metre pools, you will engage a specialist hydraulic designer that's experienced in commercial pools. Our number one priority is compliance and making sure these pools are going to stay clean 24-7. So skimmer boxes, so we've got the returns all pushing out this way and the skimmer's sucking in water this way, as I've talked about before, maximising the water flow towards the skimmer. So all the pool push out towards this way and suck into the skimmer and get all the debris. We've doubled up on the skimmers on this side to handle the loads, but apart from that, pretty standard. These are just, these are temporary so no concrete comes in, we'll unscrew them after. Because I've had it once and it was an absolute nightmare. Concrete got in the skimmer box and I spent three weeks jackhammering out the bottom of it and cutting it out and getting the concrete out and then trying to put new fittings in. Think how deep this is, you've got to get under there full of concrete, cut it all out and then try and put it all back together. I never want to do it again. That's why we got that tied down, that's covered, keep it simple, keep it covered and can sleep at night not having to empty skimmer boxes. <laughs> and these little green things here, these are actually called if you can get close, they're called dowel inserts. So the pool itself will spray first, will be connected to a surround slab. So what we do is we put these dowel inserts, which you, you put a stainless steel dowel into, and that, that connects into the insert, which leaves a gap for it. And then you tie that into the steel, the surrounds, and then pour it as one. That's how you merge two separate structures when you're doing them separately. And these, this is actually whippersnipper line. So this is how we get, I'll come over here and show you. But this is how we get the, just follow the bar chairs. <laughs> this is how we get the, what we call cut lines. So the boys will have all their measurements here and that's, the, that's our measurements for the, the pool concrete. Then they'll run the whippersnipper line along it and that'll go all the way down to the other end. And then they actually, they'll get their level to this and they'll take the level and drop it down and take it all the way through. And that's how we make sure the lines are perfect but you're always going to want to look at it down there and make sure it's straight and make sure we've got the appropriate cover. As I've mentioned before, cover is what, how much concrete goes on top the whole way. Because if your steel is going on, on the pierce, you're in trouble. So I actually worked with Hutchies to design this whole thing to make sure it would work properly. So we've already run in the pipes through the ground and stuck them up through the slab. These are our pool pipes and we've already run all our light cables and everything. The reason we do this is to make sure we can actually get the light cables in the pool. Say you run all those conduits and they're like 60 metres runs and you can't get your light cable through, you're in big trouble. So we run the light cable, pull it through, make sure we can do it again because if you ever have to replace a light, which happens, you want to be able to get it through those conduits. If you get a stuck point and you can't replace it, you're screwed. The main system all going to sit here. Then we've got the backwash points. We're going to have big heaters in here, right? So I 
worked with Hutchies and said, well, we can't just enclose this whole room because the problem is once, you know, I've said this a thousand times, but you have these heaters sitting in there, they're going to discharge all that cold air. This will just turn into a cold room once you have the roof on. So what we need is cross flow ventilation. So we've put breeze blocks here and then breeze blocks here. So the heater's going to sit here and they're going to discharge straight out those breeze blocks. And this is going to allow the fresh air to, to flow through here and, and air out the pump room. So breeze blocks, are, I've used them a couple of times now. When you've got an enclosed plant room, it's an awesome addition to add because you still get the block look, but you can actually get ventilation through it. So that's always a solution when we have enclosed plant rooms and it's like, uh-oh, we haven't allowed for this, what can we do? Put breeze blocks in. <laughs> Apart from that, it's pretty straightforward, man. Like it's all just gonna sit in here. We'll set it out perfectly, run it all. All the powers there, which we've worked with the Sparky on to make sure we've got the right powers and GPOs and you know voltages, because we're gonna need high voltage stuff and three phase on this side. These days, there's a lot of options when it comes to pool chemicals. The most common and trendy over the last three, four years is, is magnesium pools. The main difference between standard chlorine pool and magnesium pool is just instead of a salt chloride causing a chemical reaction, it's a magnesium chloride. So it still runs through the salt cell and everything, all the same equipment. If you ever have a pool builder trying to charge you more for their magnesium pool upgrade, they're, they're lying to you. If they're using the right equipment, it doesn't matter what chemical or salt you put in. So the magnesium salt, that you put in will actually have the chemical reaction to produce magnesium chloride as opposed to the, the salt chloride, which gives the pool a different feel and texture. Thing is that they claim with magnesium pools is it can be absorbed through the skin. So something like this retirement village, you want to relax, magnesium pool's perfect. Whenever you explain magnesium pool to someone, most of the time they'll always take it up. How we set the height of the pool the whole way around is called boxing. All this around the pool is set to a specific height with the boxing. And that's based on, you know, finished levels on the surround. Standard typical will have the boxing, then a 10 to 15 mil bedding, which is like a scree that perfectly levels the whole pool. And then you tile on top of that. So once we get our finished height for the pool, we'll take our 15 mil bedding off. And then say it's a 20 mil tile, we'll take that 20 mil off. And then we'll drop the concrete 35 mil below that with the boxing and set that height all the way around the pool. That's what sets our height for the whole thing. And that's how we get the perfect height the whole way around with the laser. After concrete, we're gonna let it cure four weeks. We'll come back later on. They're going to hand over in about March. So we'll come back in about three, four months and start tiling the waterline tile, the coping tile, and we'll pebble create it and she'll be done, fill her up. Meantime, we'll get all the equipment installed now while we can. It's all ready to go. So we like to get on top of that early and, and get it ready. Bulk of it will be done after concrete, just the, the finishes and the, the final touches, which will come together really nice.